broken and battered. And I was telling my boys, because I think we're the only one here that night, and I was sharing my testimony. I said, going through high school, I, I, I was handicapped. You know, uh, mentally I was, that was a no-brainer. I was one of the dullest in the school, in the school because of all the torture, right? And then physically I was deformed because I have what they call this uh, deficiency. My leg was round, like this. It doesn't, it doesn't show right now. Literally, my leg was bowed like this. And I used to walk like this. And my belly button was like this. And I remember how kids used to mock me. You know how it is going to high school and junior high with challenges like that. Wow. And then suddenly, so that picture just came to me. And I'm looking at myself, and I'm seeing the faithfulness and the mercy of God. To yeah. somebody, it's nothing. But, you know, and, and I said the consistency. And I remember uh, two years ago when I was in Nigeria, one of the boys that used to bully me, and I was the man, I had been older than me, is still where I left him. <laughs> Amen. He's still where... It's not because I'm better than him. The mercy of God. Mm. Amen. The yes, goodness sir. of God. Amen. Yes, sir. The faithfulness of God. Amen. And I'm looking, and he was shocked that I remembered him, and I called his name. Why? The picture that came to me when I saw him, and see how he used to come and take my soccer ball, and because I can't run fast enough to catch them, and it just messed my life boy up. But I'm looking at myself, and I say, if not for the Lord who has been on our side, mm, amen, yes, sir. we will be helping. Yes, sir. Amen. God is a faithful God. Amen. He is. Always. It's not over until it's over. Amen. amen. Don't quit, don't give up, don't count yourself out. Amen. Sometimes you are like, like the Bible says, Paul said, we are without hope, without God in the world, but God in his mercy. At the fullness of time, God will show up and things will begin to happen for you. Amen. God is good. All he is time. consistent in his goodness. He doesn't change. Amen. Be encouraged. Keep hope alive. Amen. Amen. All right. That's just a testimony. What I want to share today, uh, it's going to be a little bit controversial, but I know they're going to play some things. Today we're going to have a communion. And for those who are watching us and the church family, you got your email so that when it is time for communion, we all can gather together in your home. You can join us here and we can do that. And God willing, on the 10th, our Bible study will be starting, and the ladies' Bible study too will be starting. Uh, on the 10th, if by Monday of the 8th, the thing is lifted, then we can see how we're going to be readjusting the Bible study and be hearing the news after that. Hopefully, we'll be starting our Bible study either online or physically here. We'll be here from the 10th, and we're starting a new series, Self-Care. Self love, self help. It's a very beautiful thing. I'm working on that, and my heart is just blowing away. I'm just listening, and, and the Holy Spirit is just downloading this raw thing to me, and uh, just kind of formatting it just from the scratch, tailor made for now, and for you, and for me. Amen. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be very, very interesting. It's going to be a practical Bible study, self help, because of what is going on in the world today. We need something more than just going to sit down before a shrink and just talk away. We need some practical, uh, Holy Spirit-inspired, infused solution. Amen. Amen. And I believe that the Lord is going to show us that in the coming days. Amen. 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 All right, this morning we want to talk about, because for some of us, it is hard to do things without understanding it. And uh, if you're watching, take notes this morning, uh, you will... Also, you have a reason to argue and to disagree with me, which is all good. We all entitled to opinion. But I just want to talk about the benefit of the communion table because we want to know why you do what we do. Amen. Amen. And just do it. We want to know why. Why do I have to take this communion? Why is it necessary? Why is it important? Why should I do it? Amen. All right. First Corinthians. 
We're going to go to read through scripture because we need to walk with the Bible this morning. So you are going to be patient with me. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 17. Now, in giving the following instruction, listen to this translation. Instruction he calls it. So instruction in a way is an order. Instruction is not a suggestion. <laughs> Amen. When you give me instruction, you are expecting me to follow it, to abide by it. Amen. Am I right? Right? You guys, English is your first language, it's not mine. So maybe you think more in English. And so you don't have to process it. But just thinking about it. So when I give instruction, in a way, I'm giving you an order. I'm not suggesting. It's not a suggestion. It's something that you should do. And I expect you to do it. So now given now in giving the following instruction, I do not pray to since you come together not for better but for the worse. For to begin with, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you. And in part, I believe it. There must indeed be factions among you so that, listen, look at the Holy Spirit, look at the talk. They say, yeah, there's divisions among you. And I believe that there's division. You say, why? 19 now. There must indeed be factions among you so that those who are approved may be recognized among you. And so those who are, are <laughs> so sometimes you people complain and say there are so many different kinds of people that come to church or in the church, I don't go to church because and there are hypocrites there, there are liars in the church and all that. Those who, but in the midst of that, there are those who are walking the straight and the narrow road. And that is the one you should focus on. 20. Therefore, when you come together, it is not really to eat the Lord's Supper. For at meal, each one eats his own supper ahead of others. So one person is hungry while the other one gets drunk. So the communion table, actually, if you want to follow the priest, a little bit crazy the way it was done. All right. Verse 22. Don't you have houses to eat and drink? Or do you not look down on the church of God and embarrass those who have nothing? What should I say to you? Should I praise you? I do not praise you for this. 23. For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. On the night he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. Now I want you to underline that in your Bible, verse 23, on the night he was betrayed, not after the communion table didn't happen after the resurrection. Before. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he also took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant established by my blood. Do this as to drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread, drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I want you to underline the word proclaim. Because those are the things we're going to look at. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sin against the body and the blood of Jesus. So a man should examine himself in this way. He should eat the bread and drink from the cup. For whoever drinks without recognizing that word Discerning the King James Version say, same thing. Recognizing the reason for it and drinks judgment upon himself. Amen. Amen. The second scripture is John chapter 6, verse 53 to 58.
Jesus said to them, I assure you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you, in your souls. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day, because my flesh is great food, and my blood is great drink. The one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him, just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So the one who feeds on me, this is Jesus speaking of me, will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. It is not like the man that your forefathers ate and they died. The one who eats this bread will live forever and ever and ever. May the Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now look at me. I'm going to go slow because I want us, we are entering into, we are navigating into a dangerous season spiritually. Like we said, the things may not get better in the world. Amen. Amen. We are entering into that season where only those who know their God will be strong and do exploit. Not just those who just claim to. Those who have relationship with him. Those who know him. Now, one of the things about the communion table is that we've turned it into a mere ritual with no substance, with no meaning, with no power. And so as a ritual is a series of acts that we regularly repeat at the time and in a precise manner. You have to do it this way, you have to do it that way. And so we are so focused on the ritual that we miss the substance. And people argue about the ritual. Now, if you read that Corinthians that we heard well, the communion was actually not very organized thing because everybody come in and it's like they're having a party. Right? From what we read just now. Because some people ate and ate and ate. So it's not just a little, little bread that people just sip and, you know, you know kind of thing. No, 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 no. It's not we're just coming to the front and just receiving it and acting very, you know what I mean? It was more like a celebration. So there was more to it. But what has happened through the years is that when things become just a mere ritualistic thing, it loses its power and its defects and its meaning. Because people have focused so much on the ritualistic aspect of it that they've lost the substance of it. So I don't believe, this is my thinking, all through the years, as I got saved, and I shared this in time past, I don't believe that Jesus is our Lord and personal Savior was a man who liked to waste time. And so I don't think he initiated that ritual, let's call it, just for the fun of it. And just go with him for a little bit. I don't think he just sat down and just, okay, just for those of us who's going to follow me in years from now, I just want to initiate another ritual just to add to the formality. He did not initiate the communion just for the fun of it. It was not just a spiritual exercise that we just fulfill all righteousness. Now let me ask you a question. Because this is, how many of us have ever been to a doctor? How many of us have ever been to a hospital? How many of you have ever been to the doctor and they gave you a prescription that didn't work? All of us. <laughs> right? But did that stop you from going to the doctor? How many of us have been treated by a particular medication and it did not work for you, but it worked for your sister. How many of us go sit down before the doctor just for the fun of it? Nobody just leave their home in the morning. Oh, I'm, I'm bored. I want to go to the hospital and visit my doctor so that we can just sit down and chat on medical things. No. 
But when you go before the doctor, there are procedures, and he takes you through. Let me say rituals of things to do and what not to do, one of the things. The Bible says in Psalm 103, verse 1 and 2, it says, Bless the Lord. I'm saying that to say this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and everything that is within me. Bless his holy name. And do not forget his benefit. Right? Do not forget his benefit. So everything that has to do with the kingdom of God comes to the benefit. Benefit is not a privilege. Benefit is your right. Benefit it is what is due you after service render. Am I right? Now, if you don't work in the, if you're not employed by the town council, for instance, would you go there and say, oh, because I live in Grand Cash, I, I want to enjoy the medical benefit with everybody else? No. The only thing that entitles you to medical benefit is that you are an employee of that company and you are offering a service. And you negotiate your benefit. You don't beg for it because you demand it. It is your right. So the Bible says, do not forget his what? Benefit. And so the problem with the church in time past and up to today, and like what we talked about last Sunday, and we'll continue, continue again this Sunday, next Sunday, is that there's so much, so many voices in the world today that are full of deception. You know what a heretic is? There's so many heretics in the, in the church, even on the altar. The very word heretics means one who pick and chooses. <laughs> right? You pick the one you want, and you discard the one that you don't want. You pick and choose, you can believe. You say, this is towards us, this is, you say, when you pick and choose, you can believe just about anything. And so you, they open the scriptures, and so, okay, oh no, the Old Testament is not right, because this one is there, I won't accept it. Oh, ew, okay, oh, they said this in the New Testament. No, that is too harsh. God can't do that. So people, they pick and choose what they want and interpret it to suit them. And a heretic is one step away from occultism. Because occultism simply means, my definition, is getting the word of God to say what you want it to say. That you are supposed to align your life to the word, not make the word bend to your own thinking. And so there are three words in 1 Corinthians that we read, and I just want to bring that to you this morning. One was the sign, which is recognized and proclaimed. Now Paul says us, he said, proclaim. Proclaim until he comes. Now, he said, people take the communion without discerning the body, without knowing the purpose for which this thing was initiated. Now, it has just become just a religious ritual that has lost its meaning. And so the reason why they come and misbehave is that they don't even know why. So and if you read on, you say from some of you eat it and they sleep and they die and, and, and they're like, no, no, no. This thing is supposed to bring life. But because you don't know the purpose of which it was initiated, what is abuse? Abnormal use of a thing. They say when the purpose is not known, abuse becomes inevitable. Mm -hmm. The church, in most cases, don't, does not even know the purpose of what we do while we do it. We just go through the motion. And so we get frustrated because we go through the motion without knowing why we do it. Oh, I was born in the church. My father, we have communion every last Sunday of the month, every second week of the month. You know, some people will even argue that. Amen. Huh? They will argue that. That communion has to be second Sunday of the month. It's not, it's not right. Or it has to be the third Sunday. It has to be in the morning or in the evening. You know, we... 
they argue over the ritual without knowing the substance and the essence of what it is. To the same list of the tech with senses other than vision, that is having a revelation of knowledge, to recognize and to recognize what you are doing. Instead of just using your, your eyes and the visual, just looking into the spirit. And so God, Paul said, the reason why you guys are misbehaving and you're not having the, the desired effect of the communion table is because you don't even, you don't design it. You don't know the effect, you don't know the impact, you don't know the degree of what you've got. And so when you abuse it, then nothing happens for you. The word again there, recognize. To recognize it, to acknowledge formally that which you have been introduced to, to be true. To admit that Jesus Christ has been Lord and sovereign, meaning he is self-existent, self-sustaining, absolute in knowledge, absolute in power, unquestionable in his action. Now when you understand the one who's giving you this, then Paul says, the one that got me, that we don't get it, is that. You say, then proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Now let me ask you a question. Do people die every day? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, when people die, is that something to <coughs> talk about? Death is death. Nobody is interested. Right? We grieve. Oh, this person died. So? So if I come to you every day and keep telling you, those of us who have lost a loved one, say you, you, you lost your dad a week ago, and every day I come to you, now, oh, your dad is dead. Your father is dead. Your father is dead. Of what use is that to you? <laughs> How does that benefit you? Now let's think of it now. We want to talk to each other. So if I'm proclaiming that, oh, Jesus died, Jesus died, Jesus died, of all benefit is that? How does that change my life? How does that benefit me? What does it mean to proclaim? Is to declare publicly, proudly, Either in speech, writing, in praise, to glorify openly and publicly. So to proclaim is to declare the benefit of that death to people. Amen. Ah? To proclaim. So if I'm proclaiming the Lord's death through the communion table, then I'm declaring publicly the benefit of that thing. It's not just a ritual. Is somebody hearing me now? Amen. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So to proclaim that he died will not benefit anyone if there is no benefit to it. Amen. So in Psalm 68 verse 11 says, the Lord gave the word, great was the company of those that publish it. So you don't just go around announcing people's death. We proclaim that we are saved. Because that is the good news. We proclaim the death of Jesus because through his death, we are saved. Mm -hmm. We proclaim the death of Jesus because it was what happened on the cross of Calvary that becomes our benefit. Mm -hmm. He died that we might live. Mm -hmm. He became poor that we might become rich. Mm -hmm. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement was upon him. By his stripe, we are healed. Mm -hmm. That is what we proclaim it. Mm -hmm. So if I'm on the communion table proclaiming the Lord's death, I am proclaiming what it stands for. Mm -hmm. Not just a ritual. Amen, yes, sir. Look at what First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says. You all know that. He said, What? We are what? A chosen generation. A royal priesthood. Called out of darkness. This is the proclaiming now. To show forth the glory of heaven. Right? That's proclaiming. 
we will then cover to show forth. So the communion comes to the benefit. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, You are a royal generation, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we are proclaimers. So if the communion table is the medium by which we proclaim the death of the Lord, we are proclaiming the benefit of what he did on the cross of Calvary. He said, this is my body broken for you. The Bible said the night before he was betrayed, not after. And so what happened that night in the upper room had nothing to do with the Roman soldier, had nothing to do with Herod, it had nothing to do with Pilate. It was initiated before the foundation of the word was laid, said the scripture. He said, the Lamb of God that was crucified before the foundation of the word. So if Jesus said, took bread and said, this is my body, that is a mystery that I cannot begin to unravel. I can't unravel that in this lifetime. But I would do myself well to believe it. Amen. Because if he said it. Amen, yes, sir. He said the sick, you know, the Bible said, Jesus said, only the sick need a physician. Now, let me ask you a question. The Bible said we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb. Huh? Yes. The blood overcomes. Yes. By his strike we are healed. So, does the sick need that medicine? So we need to understand the premise upon which that was initiated. Why we do what we do, what we have to do it with faith, what we have to do with believing, so that we can reap the benefit of it. He said these people in, in First Corinthians, they were not reaping the benefit of it because they are taking it on worldly without discerning. They were not taking it with their spiritual eyes and understanding. They were being carnal about it. They were being religious about it. They thought it was just a ritual exercise. And they passed it down to the church. And how many hundreds of years later, we are still doing the same thing. We go through the motion every Sunday, last Sunday of the month, or first Sunday of the month, or third Sunday of the month. We gather together. We come. You know, you know that kind of, everybody becomes in Jamaica on the Sunday of communion. And we just go like that. And then we step in there and step out, and nothing happens. Because we're not discerning the body. We are not using our spirit mind to understand why this man initiated this thing for us. Why he said, proclaim my death. To proclaim is to declare the benefit of what happened on the cross of Calvary. Amen. On the cross, he said, it is finished. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. So these are some of the benefits of the communion that I have experienced that I want to share with you. One, the communion table is a strong platform for genuine, godly relationship and fellowship. And so if you, if you just come for it, just for the fun of it, or become just a mere religious ritual, they don't see. That's why he said they take it without discerning the lost body. There was no discernment, there was no spiritual understanding. It just more if our church does that every Sunday. My grandfather was a pastor, so every third Sunday of the month, he has a communion table. So we do it that same way. And they said we must use a certain drink or that's why. You know, people argue over that. Huh? People argue over the kind of bread, the kind of drink. How many of us know what wine they use in the upper room? Or the kind of bread? You can say it's a Jewish flag, whatever. We don't know. <laughs> the 
There is something, I don't know how true this is. In, there are sayings in my culture that people who practice witches or witchcraft or whatever, now when they want to suck people's blood, I don't know how true this is, right? This is what I had. I've never seen it happen. But if it is true, this is what they say. They say what they do is that if a witch want to kill somebody, they sometimes get an animal and invoke the soul of the person into the animal and then they kill that particular chicken and the person dies and they eat the blood and suck the blood. I don't know how true that is. That's what I heard. Now if I take it on the other side, that's okay. If it is true, then the enemy is counterfeiting the original. Huh? Mm -hmm. If it is true. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening to me there before you argue, listen very well. I'm not saying it is true, but if it is true, then the enemy is counterfeiting the original. So when we stand and descend the lost body, whether I took a biscuit or crackers or bread or wine or ribena or coke, white wine, green wine, yellow wine, and I stand by faith, huh? Because it's all a magical of faith. Because before he was crucified, so we know that the bread is an article of faith. That is not him. But he's saying this is an, a, a medium by which you connect your faith with me. So they can you so you invoke something in the realm of the spirit that I don't care how theologically sound you are, we can't explain that mystery in mm -hmm. this lifetime. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I don't know how it works, but it works. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I don't know how pray for somebody and speaking to the person over the phone and they get healed. I don't know how it works, but it works. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to stand up before you and there is something large in your body, a tumor growing, and they prayed over you, and the tumor began to melt like wax without any surgical knife. I don't know how it happened, but it does happen. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That I cannot explain it does not mean it doesn't happen. That I cannot explain it does not mean it's not true. Mm -hmm. That I have not experienced it does not mean it doesn't happen. <laughs> but it does happen. Amen, yes, sir. But if somebody else it does empty words. But if somebody else it is power. Mm. Amen. Paul says the Jews are seeking for signs, and the Greek are looking for wisdom from the Lord. But to those who believe, Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. You say, no eyes have seen, no ears have heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. What God has prepared for those who love him, but he has revealed them to us by the Spirit. He said, even the deep, deep things of the Holy Spirit. Amen, there are things that are too deep for mm -hmm. our carnal, secular theology to comprehend. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. That you don't understand, they don't stand before people and discard it and say, it's not relevant for today. Just be humble enough to say, I don't know. That I'm too carnal, I'm too theologically carnal to have discernment. A lot of people today who are standing behind the pulpit that have no spiritual discernment. They can be as eloquent as they come, but they will lack the power. Paul says, I've not come to you with the enticing words of great wisdom. There's so many enticing words of man's wisdom in the body of Christ that has freed us from experiencing the power of God. 
Look at the TV today. Everything, every show is supernatural in client. Right? Have you seen the commercial lately? Mm -hmm. People are turning to werewolf and people are turning to witches and people, and there's one that they, 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 they advertise every day and the guy will hold it and say, let your spirit come inside of me. Mm -hmm. Right? It's a show that we watch <laughs> and we're like, wow. But when you say Holy Spirit in the church, everybody gets defensive. Oh, that is spooky. That is too, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? And that is not relevant. That will not make people come to church. They don't need, you don't need to, listen, people don't come because you don't have what they need. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? So the person who is sitting down and watching those things on TV, reading Harry Potter, getting engrossed with them, that person is already hungry for something deeper than what you're offering. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Common sense. And so if you gather the youths in your church and play video game on Friday and wonder why they go back to college and don't want to do nothing with your God and then join something else, because everybody is searching. Because we are all spiritual beings having an earthly experience. Yes, sir. If you open the realm of the spirit to men, men will be interested. Amen, yes, sir. Amen. Amen, yes, sir. If you don't know how to, then tell people you don't know how to. But don't say it does not exist. Mm. Amen, yes, sir. Amen. 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 So what Jesus was doing here was purely spiritual. That it takes the sermon to get it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Because how can a man who have not yet been crucified, whose body, even, listen to me now, look at the scripture. The Bible says, none of his bones were broken. Yeah. Right? The other two thieves, they broke their legs so that they can die faster. But when they got to Jesus, he was already dead. Mm -hmm. So all they did was pierce him. And blood and water came out. But he said, <laughs> but when he was initiating this to you and me, he said, this is my body broken for you. No. That breaking cannot be done by a mortal man. No. Amen. What God was giving to us could not be done by a mortal man. Amen, yes, sir. If his body was not broken physically, then when did the breaking took place? The sermon. This is what Paul was saying. He said, these people, when you're doing this thing without the sermon, the body of the Lord. Mm. So things happen when you begin to understand the concept of what Jesus was giving to us. So the communion table becomes a platform for genuine relationship. In Acts chapter 2, verse 42, we we'll see that. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowshipping and breaking of bread and prayer. You see what happened? Fellowship happened. And so, yeah. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 and 10. And this song, a new song, say, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seal thereof. For thou was slain and hast redeemed us to God. <laughs> huh? mm -hmm. By your blood. Out of every nation, every tongue, every tribe. Verse 10 to what? To become a kingdom of priests unto the Lord. Thank you. So, if we understand the concept, if we discern the table, then when we come together as a body of Christ, there is no black church, there is no Hispanic church, there is no white church, there is no Greek church, there is no Asian church. With his blood, he has purchased man from every nation, every tongue, to be what? A kingdom unto him. Amen.
If you understand, if you descend the communion table, expectation rises when you're about to take it. Because he said, for those who are eating and waiting for him, for them he will appear. Amen. Are you, I, am I communicating this morning? Amen. Yes. Huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. Come this number two. The communion table also can be a platform that will restore joy to you. Are you full of misery? Are you full of pain? Are you depressed? Because you must see it beyond just a ritualistic thing. Jesus will not sit down and just hand us a man for malafy, just for the fun of it. How do I proclaim his death to the communion? When I step out, I'm a, I'm a chain person. Acts 22, verse 47. Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily as such that she be saved. From 46 to 47, you will see that happening. Number three, quickly, the communion table will make you a man and a woman of prayer. It gives you the ability for intercession. Because every time they break bread, they are always praying. They are not just coming for fun. Because those who understood it from the beginning, the 12 that were there from the beginning, they were the ones that caught it. And so every time they come together, and that was why things were happening. Every time there is communion, there is a revival taking place. Nobody's in a hurry today because, they, they, because if they are praying, that means they want to proclaim his death. And so if, if, if somebody is sick when taking the communion, the elders will turn around and begin to pray for healing based on the body of Christ. It's not something that just will just line up and just take and everybody go, no. It's a spiritual ceremony that should be taken seriously Amen. with great expectation. Amen. Are you listening to me this morning? Amen. The communion table has the ability to, to open your spiritual eyes. Number four. In Luke chapter 24, verse 30 to 31. And it came to pass as they sat and meet with them, as he sat and meet with them, he took bread, blessed it, and break it, <laughs> and gave it to them, and their eyes were opened, and they knew him. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Amen. Right? This was the same man who initiated it, doing the same thing. This was Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Huh? This was him, the same man, who initiated it a few weeks prior, now demonstrated it to them physically. And so he sat for them, and they, uh, their eyes, their spiritual eyes were so dead. He was talking with them, and they could not recognize him. Hmm. Religion blinds you to reality. Hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and so just like every man in the church, and, and singing, and dancing, and preaching, and here he was with them, they didn't recognize him. So he took his own body and broke it and gave it to them and their eyes were open. Amen. And they recognized him. Amen. Amen. The communion table can bring healing if it can bring death. In 29, the Bible said, 10, it said, For he that eateth and drinketh it unworthily, drinketh damnation unto himself, not discerning the body, because he does not discern. This cause that many of you are weak and sickly. Now listen to 2 Corinthians, and I want to take my time and explain something to us now. Because you need to read the whole thing in context. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 3. Go and put it up there. He has made us, listen to me, he has made us competent ministers. He has made us to be ministers. He has made us competent to be ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit produces life. Verse 7. Now, if the ministry of death 
chiseled in letters on stones, came with glory, so that the Israelites were not able to look directly at Moses' face because of the glory from his face. A fading glory. How will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? Those of us who say, oh, we don't believe in the Old Testament. Okay, we agree with you now, right? So if the Old Testament had glory, Paul is saying, the, the, the ministry of the Old Testament that is fading away had some level of glory. How much more the ministry of the Spirit, the new covenant, right? Because he said, this is the new covenant in my blood. How would it not have much more. Verse 9, if the ministry of condemnation had glory, then the ministry of righteousness overflow with even more glory. You need the sermon when you're reading the scripture. So you don't just go into religious activity. You need the sermon. You need your eyes to let the eyes. That's why Paul always pray. Let the eyes of their understanding be enlightened. Don't just go to church because of good music. If you need good music, buy good CDs and play at home. Amen. Amen. Go to where life is being communicated to you. Where the world will be rightly divided. 1 Peter 2, verse 24, again said, Who is all self bear our sin in his own body on a tree, that we being dead so sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you are healed? Thank you, Jesus. Proclaiming the body. Six, quickly. The communion table can release the divine life of Christ into us. Thank you, Jesus. What is the scripture there? John chapter 6, verse 58. This is Jesus speaking. This is the bread which came down from heaven. How can this bread that was baked by Sister Teresa in her hot baking wood charcoal oven in this night in Jerusalem be the bread from heaven. He wasn't talking about this. Amen? He wasn't talking about that. But for them to understand, they needed Sister Teresa's bread as an article of faith. Amen? To convey the message. Mm -hmm. Their faith is not here. Mm -hmm. They need the sermon to look beyond this mm -hmm. and say, oh, this is just a bad bread that was bought from the store. No, 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 this is not what we're talking about. Mm. This is just an article of faith. This is something to convey something to you. No, no, sir. So this is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your father did eat manna and are dead. Actually, the manna actually literally came from heaven. <laughs> huh? God literally rains the man down. And Jesus said, even that is not strong enough to what I'm about to offer you. He that eateth of this bread shall be forever. Mm. Let me just keep going quickly. Let's be done here. The communion table can set you up for divine connection and bread too. Mark 14, verse 13 says, and he sent forth the two of his disciples and said unto them, Go ye into the city, and there you shall meet a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. It was through that communion that we were going ready to set it up. Eyes were open. The communion table can expose the devil's plan and his gimmicks against you. Matthew chapter 26, verse 23 says, and he said, He that dipped his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. Because that happened during the communion time. Right. Psalm 49, 41, verse 9. Yea, my own familiar friend, 
Listen to Psalm 41, verse 9. Yea, my own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. Finally, quickly, God, we're done. The communion table can exempt you. And this, you see, I'm not making categorical statement because I don't want to say. But I, I, I say it can, it may, depending on how you want to think it. So, so, we saw the Old Testament as we pray. This is why we're taking the communion this morning. In Acts others, that was the first time we saw it, right? Now, God told Moses, this is why I read 2 Corinthians 3, right? God told Moses before they left Egypt uh, about the 10th plague. How many of you were familiar with that story? And then the last plague was the, the Passover plague, right? The, and then God said to them, kill a lamb, right? Sprinkle the blood on the doorposts, do this, right? And when the angel of death comes back, when he sees the blood, he will pass over. Now, are you telling me that it was the blood of the lamb that saved them? Yes, back then. Uh, the one they just caught from their backyard, from their pants. You, you know what I mean? Was that blood, was it what saved them? No. That was just an article of faith. Mm. <laughs> it was just an article of faith. It's something because God knows we are, we are, too, we are visual people. Mm. If we don't see, mm -hmm. it's hard for us to believe. If we don't touch, it's hard for us to relate. And this is why the enemy is having a feed day today. Mm. I'm feeding us with crap. And we're just taking in good. And God said, okay, put the blood. Because if God just said to them, just pray. And I, <laughs> no, no, we need to say something. Because everybody else is doing something. Mm -hmm. So he said, kill a lamb. Which was a picture of that which was coming in the New Testament. Mm. And so if the Old Testament came with some glory, mm. how yes, much more? Yes, sir. Amen. The new. Yes, sir. Mm. If what happened in Egypt in the Old Testament led to the rescuing of a nation, mm. how much more mm. that which is happening now Amen. in the new covenant? Amen, yes, sir. Amen, yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Mm, amen. It took faith because the Bible says many didn't do, some didn't do it. They didn't believe it. And it happened. And look, look at what happened. This multitude followed the Israelites from Egypt. Mm -hmm. So there were some Egyptians mm -hmm. who also partook mm. of that. Amen, yes, sir. <laughs> mm -hmm. They had faith. They said, Oh, what is their God is doing? I'm joining, I'm joining them. And they too escaped that. Amen. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. So if that in the old had some glory and some power, how much more what we have now? Amen. Amen. If we take it with discernment, if we take it with expectation, if we take it with faith, if we let go of our religious mindset, and all the fear, and all the criticism that goes on, on in the world today. Oh, that is kind of, oh, no, 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 that is not working anymore. But they will go to a new age, they will go to any other thing, they will join every other garbage. When the witches and the medium are doing their things online, nobody criticized them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And who criticized us more than anybody else? The same fellow Christians, mm -hmm. heretics, they pick and choose. Oh, no, this one, no, God doesn't work anymore. This is no longer for this time. This is no longer for this age. Oh, what you're doing now is not, you know, the spirit thing is spooky. When you talk about the spirit, you scare people, you keep people away. The same people you say we are scaring are the ones who are sitting in front of their TV watching Harry Potter, watching all those things. Mm -hmm. Nobody scares them back. <laughs> and then they come to your church and you're giving them motivational speaking and they just get, and they get entertained and they go listen to somebody else who can speak better than you. 
And then they stop coming to church and you wonder. They come to church, they come to youth, and you play all the games with them. And they play the PS5 or PS10, and you have a seven inch screen, they go to another theater that has 100 inch screen that is better. The sound is better. You can't entertain more than the world. Mm. People are not looking for more entertainment. They are looking for the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen, yes, sir. Amen. Where the Spirit is, there is liberty. Amen. Jesus. Amen. People need the Holy Ghost. People Amen. need the Spirit. Amen. If you don't need the Holy Ghost, don't go to church. <laughs> Jesus is a Spirit. <laughs> if you are happy, you know what I mean. Jesus is a Spirit now. He that worship him was worshiping what in spirit and in truth. Amen. That was holy. Amen. So why should the things of the spirit be spooky? Yeah. <laughs> in the house of God, where the spirit should reign supreme. Amen. That's right. Amen. In the church when we come together, it is spooky. But when we go to our houses, it is okay. <laughs> huh? It's okay to watch all the, the, the little girls turn into witches and, and using magic and doing, you know what I mean? That is very interesting. Oh, oh, look at that pretty witch and all that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, oh, that is nice. Everybody's <laughs> mm -hmm. happy. Oh, look at that. Isn't she pretty? Look at that. How that pretty witch. And then you come to church and they say, every demon will bind you in the name of Jesus. And you say, no, that is true. Uh, you drive, you know, you scare people away. Don't talk about those, don't talk about the spirit. If you want people to come to church, don't talk about things like that. Just tell them it's okay. If you know their life is good, God, and everything's going to be alright. The devil is alive. Amen. Amen. Father, all eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So we're going to take our communion now. For those of you at home, I think we'll just go straight to that. I will stop here. Next Sunday, God willing, if the Lord tires, I'm going to hold myself. I will not be tempted to push aside. We're going to continue. We're going to talk to more about the place of the Spirit and the inflow and the outflow. You know, how that, that, that what you take in. So, you, you know, you, 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 make, you should make a choice. This year, like we said last Sunday, the kind of information you give your heart access to and your eyes access to, your ears access to. You see, the language of the spirit realm is sound and vibration. Hmm. Let me leave it there. All right, can we just bow our heads and just begin to pray? Uh, can uh, Ian, who is coming to help you, and just pass this communion for those of us who are here, and just begin to pray, just begin to pray, just begin to talk to God as we get ready to take the communion now.